Hello, this is Danielle. This will be a short report about the status of the Node Space project, this notebook-like project we have been working on at Cyclog and using at Cyclog in the last three years. Uh, let us begin with a short demo to get an idea of what it is about. So you see we have a browser and an editor, just a closure editor, editing some closure namespace. And we can do the usual things we do. For example, we can change our code. And uh, then the browser view is responding. Right? So uh, we can evaluate the code and the browser is listening and keeping this responsive update. And we can also add some text. And so that is a short demo of what Node Space is about. It is a way of getting this browser view for our usual interaction in our editor and record enclosure. And uh, this is part of this culture called literate programming, this term that was turned by Donald Knuth. And you know, there are many tools of this kind, and this is just one of them. Mm. Let us maybe uh, tell a little bit of how we have been using it and why. And uh, this tool has been evolving and it did have different shapes in different times. And the current one is this version 4 we have been uh, creating. And maybe I just collected just a few examples of past uses of it. Uh, one of the famous ones is the CycloGML library. Uh, machine learning library enclosure by Carsten Bering. It has wonderful, very thorough documentation. So uh, this documentation is just created as closure namespace that has made, made namespaces. And maybe let us look into one of them. This one is about uh, models, machine learning models, which are very systematically documented here with you know, tables and visual outputs and all the necessary details. And that was created using node space version three in this case. And yeah, so that is uh, one example, just you know, documenting project. Another example is uh, so-called testable documents or literate testing. You know, being able to create documentation which is also testing. So that has been happening in Clojisa using version two of node space. And you see. This namespace, for example, is a rather technical namespace where we have been testing the code generation module of Clojisa. And uh, you see, it has 74 unit tests, and they are passing, and they are just inside this story of code and uh, values and text. And that is kind of important to be able to write tests in a way that is very much readable and also to have documentation that is tested to be correct. Right? So this is just yet another use of um, a notebook or note space in this case. Visual documents, uh, let us look into this uh, producer examples project by our friend Tomasz. And uh, one of these namespaces here is about documenting ridge line plots. So uh, you have these very visual colorful plots here with the code examples which are generating them. Mm, yeah, and let us uh, mention this idea of reproducible research where one may want to conduct some research and be able to document it in a way that can be reproduced, can be run again. And that is a practice we have been doing, for example, in this SICM utils group that is focusing on this SICM utils library for physics and uh, symbolic math and calculus in closure. And uh, we have a few examples here. Maybe let's look into this one, uh, where we were uh, looking into um, existing examples by uh, the library authors, Colin Smith and Sam Ritchie, and writing them in a visual way using this uh, tool, where we could see the math formulas and, and text and uh, data tables, and also the visual outputs uh, in an interactive way, which is kind of, kind of necessary sometimes when one wants to, to look into physics problems. And I think this group, the SICMs group, 
has been driving us at the psychology community to understand the needs uh, of our tools and libraries in very inspiring ways. And that is yet just one of them where we were experiencing interesting experiences in this group. Um, another uh, like related uh, use has been in study groups. So there is the ML study group where we have been learning to use the emerging stack of uh, data science and machine learning libraries. And you know, this study group is just this Zulip stream where we are interacting uh, daily and mostly in the weekend meetings. And uh, for example, let us look into the doc from one of those meetings, this time using Notespace version 4, where we were practicing image processing with tensors. And you see, we were just documenting what we were doing during the session. And at the end, we had this doc that could be kept for the future. So that is uh, yet another use. And there is also this video you might enjoy where we were uh, uh, kind of sharing publicly a few of our practices and uh, uh, joys of this study group. Um, so these are a few of the past uses, and I think we are still very much interested in all of them. And you know, Notespace is not the only tool that allows for these kinds of practices. And the landscape is big and we'll not try to cover it in this short video. We'll try to focus on a few of those existing tools in Clojure for data visualization and literate programming. Those tools that follow an idea that we like to call namespace as a notebook. And maybe, maybe let us dive in into a few of those. Um, um, and I think, uh, at least for me at the moment, these are the four tools I'm mostly interested in, uh, except for Notespace. The three others are beautifully written and uh, implemented and uh, very promising in their ideas. Oz has been the first one. In It has been there for a long time and, and uh, kind of uh, setting the, paving the way for these ideas of integrating our usual uh, editor experience with a browser view. And I think many of the other projects are very much following the ideas of Oz, and it is still very much useful and it's useful in many ways. And uh, you should look into the current uh, workshop uh, that is just happening uh, today uh, by Christopher Small about Oz. Uh, it, it will tell much more about the very many uses of it. Clerk uh, is similar to Oz in that it tries to um, listen to the user dynamics by listening to file changes and allowing this live reload experience very much the, of the kind Oz offers as much as I know. And Clerk tries to be just a little bit more clever in re-evaluating only the parts which are needed following a file change and uh, allowing possibly a quicker experience using some code analysis and hashing and caching ideas. And it is also very much extensible in the client side, very interesting story. Goldly is, it goes beyond what we can describe in this uh, session. So let us not try to describe it now. Uh, we will focus on node space. And unlike those, we, those two projects we were mentioning, Oz and Clerk, which are very much reacting to file changes by reevaluating the code, node space, tries not to cause too many code evaluations, just to listen, just to listen to user interactions and respond uh, in a careful way. And that is maybe the main difference here, the mode of user interaction. And let us uh, maybe uh, kind of try to state it uh, clearly. There are two ideas here that have been driving node space. One of them is being, being community driven, you know, being uh, growing with the study groups, growing with the community's needs, and actually growing by what people in the community uh, are uh, thinking would be useful. And uh, that's an opportunity to say thank you to the very many people who have been contributing ideas and experimenting with different modes this tool has been uh, going through. And um, another kind of idea that is very much uh, uh, important, especially in version four, is to flow with the record. What that means is, you know, just not to 
not to do too much to change the usual experience, but just to keep enjoying what the closure user can do with the closure editor and repel and just add some view alongside this experience. And that is what we hope to demonstrate now. Um, how does interaction work? So uh, you see, uh, yeah, maybe let's jump to this section. And um, so there are four kinds of interaction uh, that matter here. One of them is file change, you see, uh, we can change the code and it updates, the view updates. Another is loading the whole buffer. Uh, so, you know, if I load the whole buffer, load this closure namespace, it also uh, just updates the, the file. I could add code and it will also just update the file if I reevaluate it. It doesn't add outputs here. And that is because of how closure works loading a whole closure file does not create intermediate results or evaluations and so we're just having this quick way of updating everything and another thing which is a little bit different is region uh, evaluating one region or part of the code so for example if we have some code here and we uh, not only can see the code then if we evaluate it then we can see the result here of this part. Or, and if we have more code uh, and like uh, do that too, then uh, we can evaluate the box so of say the file and we can evaluate the whole region and we get all outputs in the region. Tabs are those things that we see at the top. You see um, this interaction tab could be changed and then uh, we change the tab and these allow us to kind of have some structure that is uh, sometimes useful in this slide-like experience. Um, yeah, another topic to discuss is how to specify the kinds of renderings one may have. So uh, let us uh, go through it just kind of quickly. Uh, one idea here that we can attach metadata to code. And these metadata are coming from a certain tiny library called Kindly that allows for these different kinds of rendering. In this case, we are saying this piece of code is for following the hiccup kind, which means, um, you know, it is rendered as hiccup, which is this way of uh, rendering uh, uh, closure data as HTML. Oh, sorry, let us zoom out a little bit so that we can see it. You see, we got a plot in this case, but also text because we have this div that contains both code and text. Another thing we're seeing here is this use of a special hiccup tag, which is part of a certain uh, library called Gorilla UI that extends hiccup with additional uh, reagent components for various data visualization libraries. Another thing we can do is attaching metadata to the value, not the code, but the value at runtime. Here we're doing it with this kindly consider uh, API. And you see, when we do that, and maybe we should scroll a little bit so that we can see it. And when we do that, uh, it works too. And it knows that should render in this case as something of the Vega kind. Another idea is this kindness protocol where one can specify that something should be considered of a new kind that is specified in this way. So we are defining the closure type here called big, big text. And by implementing the kindness protocol, we are telling how this thing can be rendered. And, you know, it just renders as big, big text in this case. Uh, oh, so just scrolling a little bit. Um, another topic uh, worth mentioning is delays. Uh, so, uh, you know, closure delays are those things that do not uh, evaluate immediately. And that is nice because we can have the, many of these in our code. And when we load the file, it is still quick to load the file. We don't need to wait for these to compute. But sometimes we may wish to keep there some ad hoc analysis or some report we may wish to get sometimes. So here is one of these, for example. And when I evaluate it, then you see the node space decides to dereference the delay and get the delay output. And in this way, we get a uh, that behavior of getting more information only when we wish to, not on every file evaluation. So we can keep our file evalu evaluations quick. Let us just look into just a few more examples. So 
uh, let us evaluate this region uh, uh, so that we can see the outputs here. Um, right, so we can have math in uh, math in Markdown and math inside this uh, pickup format. Uh, we can have tables uh, visualized and uh, plots, uh, in this case, using this VCL CLJ library, and also images uh, using that. We are, you know, just one example for this kindness API. Uh, there are a few challenges for the future, not only for user ergonomics in those and edge cases where not everything is known to the system. Yeah, maybe we should discuss those challenges at some other time. The system is not always stable. Handling events, handling concurrency, it may be a challenge and there are some bugs and I would love to discuss them with anybody who is running into them and may wish to try the system. Compatibility with other tools matters a lot. We want to hopefully create a certain format where different tools could share ideas and also user notes that could render in different tools. And there are very beautiful discussions about it with the other tool authors and I'm very hopeful about future integrations. And yeah, I would love to discuss where we're going and maybe that should go, go beyond this uh, short session. Uh, thank you to everybody who has been uh, contributing to this tool. Maybe just an, another thing, uh, like uh, in the demo, you see there is this last eval view that allows us to focus on just the last evaluated thing. And that is uh, typically useful so that we don't always need to see the whole notebook. We can just evaluate and a little note and see the outputs here. And so this special tab has been proven useful in a few experiments. Thank you for listening. I would love to hear your uh, thoughts about all that and uh, see you in our uh, community meetings.